Hi everybody, Steve here. This is another video in the series on how to create generative art. In this video, we're going to be looking at an introduction to Perl and Noise. There's going to be three videos on Perl and Noise. This one is an introduction. The second one is going to be looking at a grid project using Perl and Noise. The third video is going to be looking at flow fields. These art projects are using flow fields. Perl and Noise is a kind of smooth randomness. If you look at this red line, this is changing the height of the line based on just regular randomness, and it's very jagged. This line is changing the height based on Perl and Noise, and it's quite smooth. Perl and Noise can also be used to make something that looks like clouds, like this. Perl and Noise was invented by this guy, Ken Perlin. In 1982, he developed this technique while he was working on the movie Tron, and he eventually won an Academy Award for it in 1996. Perl and noise is basically combined sine waves. So here we have three different sine waves, different frequencies, different uh, amplitudes. If we average these three sine waves, we get a wave that looks something like this, which looks kind of similar to the wave I was showing you before. Let's make a noise line across the screen. I'm going to get rid of the draw function. We'll change this to 150. I'm going to do a for loop for x equals 0, x less than width, x plus plus. And then in here we're going to have n equals noise, noise function, x times res. So the resolution is basically how zoomed in or out are you on the noise. I'll put res equals 0 0.003. That's usually a good number to start with. You'll see in a minute how this affects the noise. We're going to use the noise to affect the position of the y. Let's do points. And the point is going to be x. And then the y will have to start part of the way down the canvas. So let's do height times 0 0.5. And then we'll add to that the n but we have to multiply that by something to get an amplitude. So let's do um, 200 maybe, and let's see what we get with that. There we go, we got a line. Let's make this a little wider. Let me change these to 500, 500. I'm also going to change the stroke weight so it's a little easier to see. We'll make it three. There we go. And if I hit play again, we'll get a different line and a different line. Now, why is that so far down? It's supposed to start at height times 0 0.5. Let me, let me move this up a little bit. N times 0 0.3, maybe. There we go. If we change this resolution number and I put it lower, then we're going to get almost a straight line. If I increase this to, say, 0 0.1, we're going to get a much more jagged line. If I change this to 0 0.1, it's going to be all over the place. And then this value here, we could increase to get more amplitude. We could combine two noise values. Let's make one of them res1, and we'll make another one res2. Let's do that one at 0 0.002, and we'll have n1 and n2. This one will be noise x times res 2. This will be x times res 1. And then instead of n times 300, we'll have n1 times 300 plus n2 times 200. Actually, we need to lower this a bit because we've got two of them. Uh, let me do this one times 100 and that one times 200. Let's see what we get. That looks fairly similar to what we had before. So here, this curve going like this is because of this 0 0.002 and an amplitude of 400, whereas the jaggedness on that curve is because of this 0 0.08 and the 100 here. Let me stop this. I'm going to show you how we do the cloud. Uh, so let's do a no stroke here. And we're going to have, uh, we only need one resolution. Let's get rid of this. We'll put it back to 0 0.03. Uh, we're going to have x. Uh, this is the same. 
but now we're going to have a y as well, or y equals zero, y less than height, y plus plus, and then this in this in curly brackets. Instead of the height of a line, I want to affect the color of a line. And the noise, instead of x times res 1, we're going to have x times res 1 comma y times res 1. And we can get rid of this. So the line was one-dimensional Perlin noise. We're doing now two-dimensional Perlin noise. So we have the noise value, and I forgot to say the noise value is between 0 and 1. Now we're going to affect the color, so let's multiply this. We'll say cull equals n1 times 255. We're st still in RGB mode. If we use the point, let's do stroke cull, and then we'll do our point at x comma y, and let's see what we get. And we're getting an infinite loop possibility error. So let's do slash slash no protect. I'm pretty sure I am not in danger of an infinite loop in this case. And there we go. We've got our cloud. Uh, but there's an easier way to do the cloud that doesn't quite take up as much time. We can do plus equal three. So we're skipping uh, a bunch of points. And instead of a point, we're going to use a rectangle. So we'll do rect x comma y, and we'll make it size 6. So it's a pretty small rectangle. Uh, instead of stroke, we're going to do a fill. And we're going to have no stroke. If we have stroke with the rectangles, it'll be a very black screen. And this produced much more quickly. If I hit play again, we'll get different fields. Now let's say we want only black and white instead of a gradient here. Let's add an if statement right here. If n1 is greater than 0.5, then we'll make n1 equal to 1. Then n1 equals 0. And the middle of the Perlin noise is right at 0.5. So let's see what happens now. We get black and white. Uh, if we change this resolution, let's uh, decrease it. You'll get something like this, 0 0.008. So we get something like this. So that's 2D noise. Now there's also 3D noise. It's got an X, a Y, and a Z. But what we're going to do with the Z is we're going to animate it let me try animating this first without the Z. So we're going to move all of this. Let's uh, close this and we're going to put in a draw loop, function draw, and like this. But what we could do is with this x times res, we could add a number, let's say a count. Uh, and then in the beginning we could say count equals zero. And then we could be adding uh, to that count each time we go through the draw function. We go count plus equals, and I think it has to be pretty small, 0 .00. Let's take out another one. There we go. Now it's like clouds. If we added the count to this, now we get this. This is rather process heavy, just so you know, you don't want your canvas to be too large when you're doing this. But I want something different. Um, let me take this out of here and here. So I'm gonna do Z times res one. Yeah, let's change this from count to Z. We'll change this to Z. No, maybe we need to add a three, something like that. There we go. Now I'm getting what I was looking for. Let's increase this to 0 0.009. Very good. Um, we'll decrease this a bit to two. So that's interesting. Let's uh, remove the draw part. Um, I'll just do no loop here. 
And I want to get rid of this if statement for now. We'll just comment it out. Uh, instead of coloring black and white, let's use call here. And then we'll put 0, comma 0 and see what happens. So now we have a red cloud. Uh, let's put the call over here and take the zero here. And now we have blues. And if I put these if statements back, I get black and blue. How about we uh, change this to HSB mode? So here, the color then will be n times 360. And then we'll fill with the color 360, comma 100, comma 100. Let me take this out. There, that's what I was looking for. How about instead of these if statements just looking at 0.5, we break this out into five different colors. I've worked out these numbers ahead of time, so Let's go. So there we have some distinct colors. We'll hit play a few times and you can see what's going on here. Now I notice there aren't a lot of rose colors and I'm not seeing many orange colors either. So there's a problem with Perlin noise. It's not perfect the way it is coming out the box. So what you're seeing here is a histogram of Perlin noise values. I'm sampling almost 2 million values. This is zero up here and one down here. And you'll see that in the middle, you get a lot of values in the middle. Uh, you get almost no values on the ends. This is okay if you're doing a mountain range, but if you're trying to have an even distribution of colors, say, then this is not so good. So this is the raw Perlin and I'm going to take in the adjusted Perlin. Uh, what I've done is I've added a 0 0.033 to this number. The other thing I'm doing here is I'm mapping the number. So I, I don't think I've gone over the mapping function. Uh, you start with the number that you want to map, that is to uh, spread out, basically. So in this case, I'm assuming that we're going to have a number between 30 and 70. And I want that to be spread out to between 0 and 100. And this is because I multiplied uh, this value by 100. This is a more flat distribution, which is good. Uh, but what happens is, even though this says 0 to 100, it's actually giving me uh, numbers less than 0 and numbers greater than 100 over here that you can't see. I've added some if statements. And we'll bring those in to further flatten it out. We get a nice flat distribution. This flat distribution is good if you're trying to use Perlin noise to pick colors, if you're using it to pick types of objects, or you're making a flow field. But if you're doing something that's more for a mountain range, there's still an adjustment that needs to be made, but it's a different adjustment. So instead of 0.3 here, we're going to put 0.1, and this will be 0.9. And then we don't need this. Let's do maybe fewer values. So this is a, a better distribution for mountain ranges. It goes all the way to both ends. This is also better if you want to use sizes of objects and you're trying to fit them, uh, such as fitting boxes in a grid. This will make more sense in a little while. I'll leave a link to this in the video description. So if we go back to our example and we want to have a better distribution of colors, then we're going to take our noise value and first we're going to map it. We can say n1 equals map n1, comma. Uh, we're going to go from 0 0.3 to 0 0.7 and we're going to map that to 0, 1. I also need to add that 0 0.033 to the end of this. 
and then we'll do our if statement if n1 is less than zero then n1 plus equal one or plus plus if n1 is greater than one then we'll do n1 minus minus that's going to wrap it around so if we've got 1.2 off to the side and we subtract one then we're going to wind up at 0.2 so now this is a more even distribution of colors all the colors are represented let's lower the resolution on this there we go well, that looks good i want you to notice something here this light blue they're all pretty much connected to each other whereas these colors in here are kind of islands if you wanted to have maybe you were trying to make a river then you would want to use the light blue which is the middle values if you wanted to make islands then you would use the values on the ends so i am going to save this link in the video description that's it for this video on the introduction to pearl and noise in the next video we'll be looking at a grid art project using pearl and noise and then we'll follow that up with pearl and noise flow fields if you like this video please give it a like consider subscribing to the channel ring the bell etc comments thanks for watching see you in the next one Bye.